Let's do an example of a two-dimensional transformation. We'll transform the rigid point x, I'm, I'm sorry, the two-dimensional point x um, given by coordinates 10, 20 um, using a rotation of 45 degrees in a translation of 40 and minus 30. Okay, so we'll do this in homogeneous coordinates. So we'll write x, the vector x, um, in terms of homogeneous coordinates as 10, 20, and 1. We need to come up with a rotation matrix um, that's given by cosine 45 degrees uh, minus sine 45 degrees sine 45 degrees and cosine 45 degrees. So that numerically is uh, square root of 2 over 2 so 0 0.707 minus 0 0.707 0 0.707 0.707. Um, we'll put that into a um, 3 by 3 matrix with the rotation matrix in the upper left and the translation vector, in this case it's a 40, 30, minus 30, in the last column. Um, I'm going to multiply um, h times my point. So this 3 by 3 matrix <coughs> is multiplied by our point which is um, 10, 20, and 1. Oops. So that comes out to be about 32.9 minus 8.8 .8 and 1. Okay, um, so we've been looking at rigid uh, two-dimensional transforms. Let's look at non-rigid transforms. So um, this transform is the rigid transform but multiplied by a scale factor. So this uh, matrix out in front here essentially scales everything by a factor of s. So we, it could, for example, rotate, translate, and stretch or scale the object. A more general transformation is an affine transform, which means that we can put an arbitrary 2 by 2 matrix here and still have our translation here. So this will model rotation, translation, scaling, shearing, and reflection. And this transform has six degrees of freedom because there are six numbers. If I wanted to calculate the transform from corresponding pairs of points, I would need uh, three points because each point contributes to equations um, and I have six unknowns. Let's do another example. Um, let's say I have an image A here and I want to apply a affine transform given by this matrix to it to calculate image B. So all the coordinates in A are remapped to some location B. So easiest way to do this is to look at the uh, corners of this square that I've drawn here. So if I make a list here um, of x, a, y, a, and look at what points those are mapped to in B. So the first coordinate, uh, the upper left corner is 0, 0. Um, obviously, if I plug in 0, 0 for x, a, y, a, I also get 0, 0 for x, b, y, b. Um, the upper right corner is at 50, 0. Um, if I plug in 50 and 0 for x, a, y, a, um, well, I guess let me just do that. It's going to give me 1, 0, 0, 0 0.25, 1.50, 0, 0, 1. 
times 50, 0, 1. So multiplying that through gets me um, 50. Um, and then uh, 0.25 times 50 is 12.5. And then 0, 0, 1 just gives me 1. So that maps to 50, 12.5. Um, next coordinate I'll look at is 0, 50. That maps to 0, 75. And then finally, 50, 50 maps to 50, um, 87.5. So, um, so that describes how the corners of the square are mapped from one to the other. So if I look at the whole image, B, it's going to look something like this. Um, the first corner maps to here. The second corner maps to 50, 12.5. So maybe something like there. Um, next one maps to 0, 75. So maybe here. And the last one maps to 50, 87.5. So about there. So my arrow might look something like, like that. So in affine transforms, um, li parallel lines remain parallel, but things can be stretched and rotated and things like that. Here's an example on a real image uh, where every point in the left image is mapped to a point in the right image using affine transform. The most general kind of transform is a homography. And this transform just uses an arbitrary 3x3 three three matrix here. Um, so when you do that, you might not get a 1 in the third element here after multiplying this matrix through. So we still need to divide through that el by that third element to force it to be equal to 1. Um, this kind of transform um, does not necessarily preserve um, parallel lines. And as we'll see later in the course, a homography maps points from the projection of one plane to the projection of another plane. It's very useful. Finally, to summarize these transforms we've been looking at, um, this is the, uh, the matrices that um, we've been talking about, the number of degrees of freedom, and what they preserve in terms of um, properties of the shapes.